There's a few points I'll make, not to offend anyone here, but I think using imams as a universal is unfair. Mm -hmm. The imams are saying bad things, or the imams are anti-pluralism, or the imams are anti-social justice. So I just want to say it would be like us saying the social activists right. and the bloggers. The Muslims, yeah. And I think using universals <laughs> is always a very problematic issue. Most of the imams actually, since I've come back to America, honestly, from Imam Majid and Adams to yes. Imam Imad in Oklahoma, most of them are actually talking about social justice mm -hmm. issues. And many of them are at the forefront of getting the wall knocked down and allowing sisters to play mm -hmm. a much greater role in the community. So what, one thing that's interesting, I think, also is our view of our own sexuality. And, and I, what I feel sometimes is we're very uncomfortable uh, to the point that in a, a mosque that I was in a few years ago, and I'm sorry to interrupt you and I apologize also, we, they have the security apparatus in the back for the sisters, the, like the non-see-through glass, mm -hmm. where they could see out and men couldn't see in. The bulletproof, yeah. The bulletproof, <laughs> yeah. The banker, the banker windows. So what happened was they started turning off the lights to pray on that side, and an older woman contacted me and said, you know, I've been praying for years with lights on. And when they turn off the lights, the kids just, of course, you know, when you turn off the lights, the little kids are going to go crazy. And so I contacted the head of... Sisters community, remember, you know, and, and, and I asked her what's going on. She said, well, there's men staring at us through the that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, you know, we live in the age of Internet porn. I mean, I'll be, I'll be really suave with you, not frank with you. We live in the age of, you know, sexuality, the pornification of society. If a man is coming to the mosque to look through that window at 65-year-old aunties in Ruku, he has a psychological problem that goes yeah. beyond the mosque. I mean, you, you don't go to the mosque. You don't go to the mosque to get hot. I mean, and I hate to say it that way. And I think that goes back to one thing. We're not really comfortable with who we are. We're, we, are you telling me if we take the wall down in the mosque and sisters pray behind us, it's going to turn into triple X? What, what type of community are you? Yeah. I mean, and, and, and honestly, some people have that mentality. Well, you know, if we look at the sisters, you know, what if you look, you go every day outside and you yeah. look at everyone from Halle Berry <laughs> to Ash Ashwarari Rai, and you seem to have no problem with that. Right. But you come into the mosque, You've been in and I have a daughter. <laughs> no, I have a daughter. Yeah, I don't take my daughter to certain mosques. Yeah, yeah. That's because true. you're talking now about psychology. Right. I'm an educator. My degree is in education. The old, huge public schools were torn down and built with new schools simply because of the mindset of the child and his understanding of education. We're not appreciating the maslaha. We constantly talk about the benefit, the public benefit. But the majority of great scholars of Islamic law said that maslaha, public benefit, not only is regulated to the tangible, right. but deals with the emotional state of people also. Right. So if we're going to talk about maqasid, objectives of sharia, maslaha, what benefits... Our community, we have listen to what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Women are not living a dignified religious existence in our community. I want to add. I, I went to Egypt seven years ago. I went to Ezhar um, and converted to Islam in 1992 from the hip hop. My first sheikh was Rakim and Chuck D. Um, and and a lot a lot of what I learned with my wife and my children, I took them with me to Egypt. Um, and my wife, really, without her, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Uh, is just to to realize that faith in this age is negotiated. We are no longer in an era where faith can be forced on anyone. Allah says in the Quran, La ikrah la So, living in Egypt and being a little older, I went to Egypt in my early 30s, um, I realized, first of all, the important role that we have as American Muslims because we have the ability to in, in embrace the pluralistic message of the Prophet uh, in a way that's very unique. Because... As you said, you said something very interesting now, that at the table you'll find the biryanis and the mashi, but when are we going to find the mashed potatoes, the cornbread, right. and the fried chicken? Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 I think, and I think that goes back oh, to the really. earlier point of why the Americans and don't know us. Don't forget the bean pot, my brother. And the bean pot. <laughs> and for some of us, a protein shake. Yes, <laughs> point being that... that <laughs> when I lived in Egypt, and I, I don't want to make Egyptians mad at me because I know they're a little sensitive. <laughs> I, I learned, <laughs> but I learned what not to do. And, and, and I really realized that for me to be successful in light of Islam, not in light of what people think, I, I have to be ethically committed to being an American imam. 
I cannot come back like Mola Kaya Molana. No speaking like Egyptian dialect. I have to come back with like somebody say ho. Oh. I have to come back with that. But what I did realize is that faith did I just do that? Faith. Faith. So wave your hands. So faith is negotiated. And the job of the mosque, and my, I'm, I'm the youngest person probably here after you, is that we have to facilitate people's ability to negotiate their faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. You talk to young Muslims in America, we're doing a camp a month or a few weeks from now here. The number one topic of young professionals who graduate from Berkeley, Stanford, USC is we have doubts about Islam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now we have serious concerns. Mm -hmm. Women in our community who are taking Prozac because they're looking at a wall their whole life mm -hmm. and they're told that you're part of a community. Right? Mm. Are we a facilitating, facilitating that negotiation? Mm -hmm. Is it wrong to doubt? You know, the prophet said, Ibrahim has a greater right, uh, 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 right on us. And he said, you know, show me how you cause life and death. So I think the job of a mosque is to facilitate, number one, a larger definition of what our community is. Mm -hmm. If you look at the time of the prophet, the sinner was at his mosque. Mm -hmm. The drunk man in Bukhari Sahih, the first thing he does when he gets drunk is he goes to the mosque in Medina. And the first person he asks for is the prophet. <laughs> because he trusts the, the ability of the mosque and the leader of the mosque to facilitate this negotiation. Mm -hmm. yes. He's not an indicter, he's an inviter. Mm -hmm. He's not condemning, he's open and saying, he said, Kulu bani khata. everyone makes mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are those who turn back to God. That's right. So being able to allow people in... And in every book in, in, in theology, you find Iman increases and decreases. For some reason, our masjid, we think the Iman is always, you know, faith, sin. Faith. Yeah. Whereas Iman increases and decreases. Are we going to facilitate people's ability to struggle and negotiate religion in a transmodern world? Or are we going to crush their ability to do that? So I think it's important for Imams really to embrace. And I'll say something, as I am Suhaib Webb, I think so. I'm lonely in the mosques. I don't have anyone to watch Monday Night Football with me. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm saying honestly, I can, I can watch Abu Treka. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I'm an American convert of 20 years. And I'm running into converts who are not dissatisfied from a point of theology and worship, but they're dissatisfied from a point of community. Mm -hmm. So hey, let, me, let me chime in. <laughs> but can, I, can I just... So I think it's important to facilitate that negotiation and allow people to grow, make mistakes, allow your imams to make mistakes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I've said some things, next thing I know it's a whole entire blog post right. just basically trying to destroy me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> subhanAllah, yani, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm a person. Exactly. So we need, yeah, revelations not being given to me. So we have to allow each other room. We're still prepubescent as a community. Absolutely. We're going through growing pains. We can't just be, you know, strict modernist with a bunch of rules and principles and tell people this is how it has to be. Absolutely. It's not going to work.